Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're having some fun in the play queue with a blue-white artifact legends deck featuring a couple new cards from Phyrexia, including Malkator, Purity Overseer, 3 mana, 1-1 one, one legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, it is joined by a 3-3 three, three artifact token. And at the beginning of our end step, if three or more artifacts entered the battlefield under our control this turn, we get to make an additional one of those 3-3 three, three tokens. And our deck's pretty good at enabling Malkator, as we can also generate a lot of extra mana with our Relic of Legend. And as you may have noticed, most of our creatures in this deck are legendary, so Relic makes one mana of any color. And we can also tap an untapped legendary creature we control to add one mana of any color. And this can also ignore summoning sickness, so we can still tap our creatures for mana right away, which is one way to chain together multiple artifacts to get that free extra token end of turn. And then with all the extra mana we can generate with Relic, we can also cast a very big Chaos Reconstruction, X and Triple White for a sorcery that lets us take a look at the top 7 cards of our library, putting up to X, artifact and or creature cards with mana value 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. So that can also find multiple things to put in play at the same time and get that free token. And then a Relic also plays very well alongside Unctus, a Grant Metatect, a 3 mana 2 4 legendary artifact creature that gives other artifact creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so a nice anthem effect for the deck. And whenever another blue creature we control becomes tapped, we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So if we have Unctus in play alongside Relic and a blue legendary creature, like Malkator for instance, we can tap a Malkator using the Relic, and then because it's a blue creature becoming tapped, we also get to draw and discard with Unctus to dig deeper into our deck and find more cards like Chaos Reconstruction. And then we can also pay a Phyrexian mana, and then until end of turn, a creature we control becomes a blue artifact in addition to its other colors and types. So that's one way of turning a white creature into a blue creature, to still get to draw and discard. And then one of the few non-legendary creatures in the deck is Annex Sentry, still an artifact creature, so has great synergy throughout the deck. A 1-4 with Toxic 1, that part doesn't matter too much, but when it enters the battlefield we can exile target artifact or creature an opponent controls with mana value 3 or less until Sentry leaves the battlefield, so it gives us some much needed interaction. And then our last 3-drop is a Mirror Box. Since we are a legendary deck, this says the legend rule doesn't apply to permanents we control, so we can have multiple legendaries and planeswalkers in play at the same time, which can be a lot of fun, getting to make several 3-3 three, three tokens end of turn with double Malkator, or maybe getting to draw and discard several times with Unctus. And then those legendaries get plus 1 plus 1, and each non-token creature we control gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature we control with the same name as that creature, so also rewards us for having multiple of the same creature in play at the same time. Then our two drops include three copies of the reality chip, as another cheap legendary artifact creature can reconfigure it and then use it as kind of a mana sink to play spells off the top of our deck. Do want to make sure to tap it with a Relic of Legends before reconfiguring, because once reconfigured it no longer counts as a creature we can tap with a Relic. And then it's another blue creature we can maybe tap with Relic while we have an Unctus out to draw and discard. And then a Sten Paranoid Partisan will enter often naming Artifact to give all our artifacts a 1 mana discount, so also allows us to quickly empty our hand. Every now and then it could name Planeswalker or maybe even Sorcery to discount our Chaos Reconstruction. You can always pay 3 mana Exile Sten to essentially flicker it, and then we can decide to name something else if we wanted to. And then four copies of a Reckoner Bankbuster also has great synergy throughout the deck. Can play it on turn two, and then on turn three, using Malkator, we can crew it and hit for four. It's an artifact creature that gets bumped by Unctus, and then we can also sink additional mana from Relic into activating Bankbuster to draw. And then we also have a one of Tesseret, Betrayer of Flesh, to synergize with Bankbuster, saying the first activated ability of an artifact we activate each turn costs two generic less to activate. So now we can draw with a Bankbuster for free, even in the opponent's turn. Can maybe make use of Tesseret's discount in our turn and the opponent turn as well. can also potentially reconfigure reality chip for just a single blue mana. Just have to be careful not to tap our relic before making use of Tezzer's discount, otherwise it's going to go to waste. Then the plus one lets us draw two and then discard two unless we discard an artifact card. Minus two turns an artifact into a 4-4 creature. And then the minus six gives us an emblem saying whenever an artifact we control becomes tapped we get to draw a card. So it can also be very fun alongside our relic of legends drawing a ton of extra cards. And then we're also playing two copies of Teferi which shines a alongside our relic and a legendary creature, as we can use a plus one to untap an artifact, creature, and land. So untapping relic, a legendary creature, and land essentially generates three additional mana. can also 
potentially tap opposing creatures with a plus one in addition to gaining two life, and then a minus two can look at the top three to choose a card, put it into our hand, and the minus seven emblem lets us untap all our permanents during the opponent's turn in addition to drawing an extra card, which can also be very fun. And then I almost forgot about Skrelv, the one mana legendary artifact creature, has perfect synergy throughout the deck, cannot block, but we can tap it, choose a color, and then another creature we control against Hexproof from that color until end of turn, also cannot be blocked by creatures of that color, so quite flexible, but more importantly, a way to protect our key creatures from spot removal, so it can save our Unctus, prevents a sentry from getting removed and giving the card back that we potentially exiled. And then a mana base has a few goodies as well, two copies of Igancho, more than I usually play, but because we have so many legendaries, we can use this as additional interaction, since it can be channeled for often just a single white mana if we control two or more legendaries to deal four to an attacking or blocking creature, and then a Soaring City can also be channeled to bounce an opposing permanent back, have two of those as well. And then we've got the new Seacrum Coast as another dual land to complement a Deserted Beach and a Darker Waste, as well as four islands and five planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Stand naming artifacts. And then double relic to ramp into a big reconstruction. Let's see what we're up against. A red white so far, and looks like an equipment deck. Okay. So can play a relic and then still have enough mana for Overseer. Doesn't quite trigger twice, but still quite powerful here. And then Sentry can maybe exile an opposing creature before it does too much damage. War Whip means we can exile the token itself and get rid of it for good. Alright, so we're building up a nice board. And now Overseer will trigger end of turn as well, since we played three artifacts. Attack all out. And next turn we can Reconstruction for X equals 5 at the very least. Probably don't need more than 5 in most circumstances. Okay, Astor's pretty nice alongside the War Whip. So they can equip things for free now. 6-5 with Hastes, and the Crowbar can also take out some of our artifacts. So let's reconstruct and hope for the best. X equals 5. Alright, could have been better. Reality Chip and Mirror Box. So, just gonna pass. And then hope to reconfigure Reality Chip to go off next turn. At least the sentry can deal with one of the opponent's equipment. Astor is 7-6. That also works, moving the crowbar. And reality chip down. So we could exile the War Whip to remove Double Strike and the cost reduction. Although, let's see, I guess if we just exile the token we have lethal here, so that seems better. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and seems promising. Got Sten which probably still names Artifact. Discounting our Relic, discounting Mirror Box, and then set up a big reconstruction. So next turn we could play Land, Relic, and Unctus in the same turn, and then still maybe play Mirror Box afterwards, we'll see. Get to untap. Yeah, let's go all out. And then we get to loot by tapping our blue creature with Unctus out. Coast can go. 
not a bad turn. And then probably go for reconstruction now. Opponent on Jeskai, so it could be control. They haven't done much so far. So sweeper could be incoming. Depopulate at least draws. So now we'll probably wait on reconstruction. Can get a Tesseret down. Which could also animate one of our artifacts. I guess mirror box can turn into a 4-4. Start applying a bit of pressure, or we can work our way up towards an ultimate, which is also quite powerful. Yeah, let's just plus. And then discard two lands. And get to untap. So do we want to reconstruct into a bunch of open mana? Maybe okay. Could also plus Tesseret first, see what's up. Alright, two more lands can go. And then maybe we just bait with an Overseer. Big score in response. Discarding Jingitaxis, so maybe opponent's gonna play that next turn, which would be a problem. Right now, if I reconstruct, I can do it for only x equals 1, so that's not quite worth it. So, yeah, I guess we'll just pass and hope there's no Jenga Taxis next turn. Could still ultimate Tesseret, at least. Invoke Justice, bring back Jin. That also counts. And they still have 3 mana left. So, ultimate Tesseret while we can, I guess. And then I can get a Relic countered and then go for Reconstruction, but let's draw first. Find another Reconstruction. Overseer would not get countered by Jin, so I have to go for Relic. And then I can Reconstruction for X equals 1 only. That's not very exciting. What if I get Reconstruction countered and play another Relic, which is basically another card draw engine? I think I prefer that. So we'll Reconstruction for zero. Gets countered anyway. And then play Relic. And I could draw now. Okay. Play a land and pass. So we've got our Tesseret Emblem, drawing three cards per turn. All the opponents going off as well here, one with the Multiverse. Restoration. So we can jump with Overseer since we have another one. The Fairy's nice too with the uh, Relics. So... Bankbuster gets countered by Jin, and then we can set up a big reconstruction. Is that to move? Or we can play it the fairy first. Haven't played a land yet either. Yeah, I guess we'll Teferi. And then I guess with a legendary creature out, it even makes three mana with a plus one. So get Bangbuster countered. Should have drawn with Relic first. Reality chip we would like to resolve. Can play it here. Find another Relic on top. So this can make mana with Relic, which also draws with Tesseret Emblem. So I want to play as many artifacts as possible this turn while we had a spell countered by Jin. So we can play Unctus. Sentry doesn't do a whole lot. So we can maybe use that as bait to go with uh, Jin next turn. Okay. And then... Could keep drawing. In case we find something else.
Okay, discard the land. And that's going to be it for now. Could still turn this into a blue creature, although I wouldn't be able to tap it, so... We'll pass. Make a token end of turn. So yeah, we're somehow keeping up with uh, Jenga Taxius, but for how long is the question? A truck stuff for free off the top, not bad. Finds another Invoke Justice, negates, can counter our reconstruction sadly. Nothing to get back with Invoke Justice at the moment. opponent keeps digging. Okay, if we draw Soaring City we can channel, bounce Jenga Taxius. That gets around to negate. Although can we really make a lot of progress in that one turn? That remains to be seen. Another reality chip on top. We can also reconfigure reality chip so we can cast some things for free here, which I should maybe start with. And then channel Soaring City while I control enough legendaries, although with Mirror Box I could play another one here soon. Discard land. Reconfigure reality chip. Play this off the top. Yeah, this turn might take a second. So I can play a land for free. Then we'll start drawing. Another Relic of Legends would get countered by Jin, so maybe time to bounce. And then the fairy can also untap here if necessary. So let's tap a creature first. Can maybe find a stun to discount our artifacts before playing them out. Reconstruction, always tempting. So plus the fairy. Can also potentially tap a Traxa to set up an attack. Instead of making the extra mana. Alright, so reconstruction, let's say we cast it for three. Opponent could negate. And then we could set up another reconstruction. Or we could sentry, remove a blocker, and smash. All right, and our opponent explodes. I guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Question is whether to stun onto or bankbuster against black-white. Okay, opponent might take away stun here. Although if they're on a control deck, I imagine bankbuster is more threatening. Take stun anyway, so bankbuster it is. And then Overseer Cruise Bankbuster to hit for four. And if we play Unctus and tap our Overseer, it will also draw. And even if it cannot attack, we can still use it to crew Bankbuster. Alright, another discard spell this time with Cleave. Can take any card. Takes Unctus. Alrighty, so in that case, probably keep attacking with the first Bankbuster, draw with the second one.
opponents at 10. And I could draw now if I wanted to. Or we could wait since we've played a land already. In case there's another discard spell here. Ooh, Vindicator. Okay, so that explains all the white mana. 5-5, five, five. that's not that easy to get past. And we cannot exile with Sentry. So unless we're attacking for lethal, that's going to hold off our attacks here. So yeah, cannot quite crew both Bankbusters. So in that case, could play Reality Chip, or we can keep drawing with the Bankbusters. Reality Chip lets us see what's on top, but I wouldn't be able to reconfigure it right now. So maybe better off drawing. I'll land. So I'll just go tap land and pass. And then by not playing Reality Chip, next turn I can maybe make an extra token if we play three artifacts in the same turn. Seraph giving a lifelink is going to make it tricky to race, but then I guess we could attack into Vindicator. So maybe they'll go for Vigilance. Yep. Could still find a Soaring City to bounce Vindicator. Teferi can tap it. So we have a couple answers. And Adoress is going to miss. Find another Bankbuster, okay. And another Reality Chip. So we have options. Now I might play Chip and then I can reconfigure, play a land off the top for free. So another Sentry. So no need to reconfigure now. And then instead, if I activate Bankbuster I get a Treasure, which counts as another artifact for Overseer. Stand on top. So I want to play another artifact, and Bankbuster makes sense, could also Sentry exile Seraph, although then if they kill Sentry they get back the larger version, so it's not without risk. Yeah, I can just play another Bankbuster. And then end of turn make a token. And next turn we can play Sten and play some cheap Sentries. But we are dying in a couple attacks to these flyers. Seraph stays back, so just take five. And Obliterator, I see. Opponent going for both Vindicator and Obliterator. Fair enough. Take our draw. Land on top. So if we place then naming artifacts. Sentry exiles Seraph, Sten and Sentry crew one Bankbuster, Pilot crews another, 3-3 three, three token crews a third, we're attacking for 16, opponent has two blockers, so that should work if there's no interaction. Crew Bankbuster. Crew Bankbuster. Crew Bankbuster. And attack all out. Block, block. Take eight. And that should do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. Skrelv into Bankbuster, into Overseer. And then Sentry has Interaction. Ooh, nice Relic. So next turn could go for Relic, draw with Bankbuster. Or now Sten, also an option. Yeah, Relic into Sten naming Artifact seems fine. Opponent seems to have a Counterspell. That's unfortunate. So we'll just hit for one. Well, 
Oh, I guess it's time to beat down now. And we'll leave Skrull for protection. Just smash for four. Lands tapped. Still gonna play stun here. Naming artifacts. Crew bank buster. And hit for seven. Opponents at seven. Do we see an end of turn mind splice apparatus? It's gonna be deluge to dig instead. So if our opponent finds a board wipe, like a depopulate, that would be bad since we don't have a way to crew bank buster to keep up the pressure. But at least we'll draw from controlling a multicolor creature. Another bank buster. And Unctus, so still a little bit short of crewing the bank buster. Maybe start by drawing. Okay. So now. A reconstruction could be a way to find a couple creatures. Farewell exiles or artifacts, a good one to get out of the way, I guess. So let's reconstruction for two while we can. Finding chip and bankbuster, I think. Land on top. Yeah, farewell is pretty much impossible for us to beat, so the fact that we got it out of the way is good. Fairy makes a token, Sentry can exile it, and we can crew Bankbuster thanks to Unctus as well. So this is going to be a good turn. Question is whether to go face or kill Teferi. Always a good idea to finish off a Planeswalker, although I can put my opponent to one here, and we have another Sentry for a token. So I think we hope they don't have another farewell. And then, hmm. I guess I would have liked Tezzeret on top of my deck, so I had the option of enabling Bangbuster with Tezzeret and having Sentry for the token. But if they make a token, we should be alright, so I'll discard Sentry. Points at one. And we'll pass. One's drawing, so they're maybe digging for another farewell. Firestorm kills Teferi, although Tezzeret can now turn Bangbuster into a creature and hopefully kill them. Fires of victory, but our opponent had to take one damage to cast it, and they explode. Alright, close one here against control, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Sten discounting our relic, and now we've got a reconstruction to build towards. Opponent on blue-white, is it control? Or do we see some creatures? Soldiers, okay. Hopefully Thalion doesn't show up, but they probably would have played it on turn 2 if they had it. And then Double Overseer can provide plenty of blockers. Sentry, also going to be quite effective. And a Siege Veteran's fine. Ideally we can hang on to Soaring City as a cheap way to bounce. So Seacrum Coast was a perfect draw. Okay, so if I play Relic, can play Overseer for 3 mana, and that's it. Or we can Relic, play Sentry, although well, I don't know if we need to exile anything just yet. So Relic into Overseer seems fine. And then set up our Reconstruction maybe next turn. Okay, Harbin will be a long-term problem if they build up a big enough board. And 
and let's see if we manage to hold off an attack. Opponent might have a reinforcements to flash in end of turn. So, yeah, we probably need to exile some creatures here to make sure they don't fly their entire team. So we can play a double sentry here. One deals with Harbin, the other probably with the Valiant Veteran. Could also hang on to Soaring City to bounce. Although I could still do that after playing Sentry. And attack with our 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. Now actually, if I play my land out and play Overseer, I would get uh, two tokens end of turn since we played two additional artifacts. So that's probably worth it. Lose one to the legendary rule. But nope, opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Nothing to play early, but uh, at least we'll be able to use the ferry to generate more mana for reconstruction. And now Bankbuster into Overseer can start applying a bit of pressure. Turn to Reunion, so put onto Reanimator deck. No big creature at least. And then next turn if we play Unctus, we can also tap a blue creature to draw and discard to keep hitting our land drops. Do we see a Fable on three? It's gonna be a Flash Gorger instead. Okay. So Soaring City could be channeled. Could also just use it to cast Teferi. Although I'm also liking Unctus plus Skrelv as a potential play. And then we grow our artifact creatures. Can crew. And then attack for 9 damage. That seems fine. And we get to loot with Overseer to maybe set up a bigger reconstruction. Do we need sentry? Could exile flesh quarters, so seems fine. Teferi could also tap it down, but probably better to exile it for good. Could have also paid two life to turn one of these into a blue creature or even both, so we can keep drawing and discarding. But I'll stay at 20. Points at 6 in the meantime. Go for the throat kills one of the few targets. Everything else is an artifact. Putting back up to 9. And it's a ferry. So a sentry does not crew Bankbuster by itself. But I could crew it with Skrelv. And then we could still attack for lethal. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and has a lot of potential. Turn one Skralf into Reality Chip, make three mana with Relic, and then Reality Chip can be our mana sink. Opponent on a Naya colored deck. And another Skralf coming up, so I'm not too upset if this one dies. So sure, we can attack, or we could protect Reality Chip, which is maybe more important. Gala Greeters are opponent on tokens. Another reality chip coming up, alright. So not the best set of draws, but for now we can play Relic. And then reconfigure onto Skrelv. And then we've got a cheap Soaring City coming up as well, although now that Reality Chip is no longer a creature, it uh, doesn't contribute towards the discount. So your opponent gets to have Gala Greeters. And no follow-up, alright, play Sentry of the top and don't want to play land yet in case we can play one. And 
and another Skrelv not helpful until we find a mirror box. So, yeah, just gonna pass here. Don't think it's worth it to attack for one. Now we can still channel Soaring City end of turn. Rocco X equals one, gets to tutor up a creature. Not something we really want to bounce. Yeah, I'll hang on to Soaring City. Play line of the top. And Reconstruction we can cast for X equals 3 here. Since again, Chip doesn't tap now that it's an equipment instead of just a creature. And find Mirror Box, Sentry, Unctus. Perfect. So now we can play the other legendaries and exile Wormlets. And we can keep going. So, yeah, got to see our blue-eyed artifacts in action. Chaos Reconstruction, perfect curve topper for the deck after we make a bunch of mana with Relic of Legends. But of course you're not guaranteed to have Relic in every game. And then the deck can feel a little bit sluggish, not having a ton of 2-drops necessarily that uh, help you out. But uh, Discount from Stun's always fun. And then Bank Buster, both good late game, especially with Tezzeret. But also good to follow up with Overseer to start beating down. So the deck has some cool things going for it, especially with Unctus as well, helping us draw and discard to get through the deck. But it's not the most competitive deck out there, only have the one interactive creature with Sentry, and then we're relying on a few channel lands for added interaction. So it's just not gonna quite cut it on the ranked ladder, but as far as a casual deck is concerned, it's a ton of fun. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.